makes a vow and the husband hears the vow, the day he hears, within 24 hours, he notifies the vow. So the Prophet says as follows. When the husband hears the vow, he notifies it. And the day he hears it, within 24 hours he hears it. Anything that comes out of the lips, the vow, to prohibit our souls. The Gemara says, he can nullify things which belong to Eden Nefesh, affliction of a soul. That the father is the husband. Because when a woman afflicts her soul, the husband doesn't want a wife that she's contracted and depressed and into herself. He wants an opening woman that she's flo floating, as they say. They say in Hebrew, Zorene. She floats, a contracted woman. So therefore, part is the relationship. The tailor gave the husband the power to nullify those vows. So it says, "Lo yakum." Those vows will not will not stand, will not establish. Isho afeyom, the husband nullified them. The Hashem Islam, God will forgive her. So the question is. Why do we need forgiveness of Hashem if the husband nullified the vow? We know there's a big difference between nullifying a vow, finding an opening for the vow by a chokha, by a wise man, a rabbi. Somebody makes a vow, it goes to a chokha. So it's uprooting the vow from his roots from the beginning. But a husband that notifies a vow is from here onwards, like a, like, a, like a doctor. You go to a doctor, he heals you from here onwards. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't, cannot go backwards in time. The husband only has the power to notify from here onwards. So it cannot be that Hashem needs to forgive her of what she over, went over the vow in a time that the husband didn't hear about it. it. Has to be from here onwards that the husband did hear about it and he nullified it. And then onwards is nullified. She still needs forgiveness. And the Gemara explains why. A very important statement. I'm going to read what Rabbi Akiva heard from this statement, from this possible. The Gemara says. She needs an atonement. 
So Rabbi Akiva says, Amiskar ben Abba is the old Masar Chazim. For all the Masar Chazim, what happens if somebody has intent to eat a pig and, and he succeeds? He, he lifts the meat and actually it is a meat of pig. Ala Chazkama ben Kama or more so he needs, he needs an atonement. So what do we see? That if we follow the kavon, we follow the intention. If the woman had the intention to break the vow, although the vow was really nullified and her mind, which is thinking in the head, has no meaning, she still needs an atonement. So how serious is the thought? When a person has a thought and there's no prohibition, he has to have an atonement for the thought. When you have a thought and you have an action, or more so, you need, you need two atonements for the thought and for the action. That's a negative. And the positive, now she brings out, if a person had a hole in his pocket, and he had a golden coin, and the golden coin fell, and the poor person found it, and he was able to support himself, do, do you get a reward that your money went to poor people to feed them. Oh my applause, yes, you do get reward. So here, you have an action without a thought. The result is the person is using your money, a poor person is using your money, but you have no intention to give it to him. You have to hold your pocket. And it came out that the poor person is using your money, and he's happy, and he's, but he's supported, he has charity. You get rewarded for it. So you see how much is thoughts and how much is actions. We have to be very careful. Our thoughts and very strong is thoughts of governing and prayer. The whole prayer, it says, can you serve God with all your heart? The Gemara says, the Ketzi, the Holy Shabbat, how can you serve God with your heart? I know I serve God with actions. We're serving God with your heart. What is the service of God in your heart? Is prayer. It's brought down in Mogan Avram that a person that doesn't know very well all the details of Kabbalah is not allowed to have any Kavanas of, of names of God and Kabbalah Kavanot of the Rashad, etc., because he can damage more than he can benefit. So the worry might damage, but Catholic is as big a worry, you don't have any Kavanots. Unless you, you learn it for many years, and after many years you're perfect with ideas, and you can have Kavanots. Otherwise, it's better not to, or more. Even if you're not professional. But what happens when he starts praying, starts dreaming, Boeing 747, starts flying to Vietnam, he stops in Thailand, he goes to Paris, he goes to his brother, to his mother, to his sister. You fly, when you start diving, your head is flying over. So you force down to focus. So if you cannot focus, you know the Hasidi, the Gera Hasidi, you know how they dive it? Very quickly. Probably it went 50, 20 minutes out of What is this, Svoboda? Since everybody dreams, so if you say it very quick, you're so busy to say the words, you're not going to have other thoughts and blemish your prayer. The Kalim Hasidim opposite. They say that every blessing loud and show they shout. You know what the Kalim thought? They shout and scream. You can hear it from miles away. Hundreds of people that come together, they shout and scream. And they dominate for five, four, five, three, four hours straight. Shahis. And Shabbos half a day. Shout and scream. But you have to, have, you have to be tuned. Be very careful with your thoughts when you pray. When you pray, our thought is very, very delicate, and our thought can actually damage or can do good things. Here, she thought to do bad, and she did good, but she will be punished on the thinking and the thoughts. When a person walks in the streets and he sees a woman not dressed nice. And he has in his mind, he looks at her, at her, at her clothing, and her body, and who knows what goes in his mind. 
says, oh, it's only my mind, it's only my head. It's not true. Your thoughts make an effect. And surely if at night because of that he still sees or he sees other things, his other habits and his thought came to fruition the damage. But even without it, the thought itself was damaged. The thinking itself was damaged. A person has to keep his thoughts to be holy, holy thinking. And when you do mitzvahs, you have to have your thinking, your thoughts, and your heart before what you're doing. Hashem values our thoughts. Hashem values our wish for the negative and karmachoim or most of the positive. So while Rabbi Ki was crying, Rabbi Ki should have stood up and danced like I'm saying my words of Torah. Instead of saying, whoa, when he got his crying, look, this woman, she just had a bad thought. She needs an atonement. If a person has a bad action and a bad thought, how much he needs an atonement? Instead of saying, Wow, look at the value of a bad thought. You need, a, you need a torment. If you have a good thought, wow, how good it is. Why not the king was a negative rabbi? No, it wasn't negative. He knew the nature of man. He knew where we are. He knew where people are. She was crying. He was crying. And I want you to have to be careful and make it. A father, people, they say today when you go to Osan, you go to America, go to Florida, a rabbi told me, don't speak a negative. Nobody can hear. Speak a negative, everybody shut down. So you speak a positive. That's why he I spoke about the positive sense. But really, really, to shake a person, a person doesn't change. You talk about just positive. You talk about negative too. Now negative it shakes people up and it makes it to change. But if in a high level of love, Different. Or you can say, since we, Yemoisa Mashiach, Reza Mashiach, we're in a time of love, so you can talk about positive. And then Gomos, ends up doing negative. Who knows? All true for all times, and each time is different. But whatever it is, this is the lessons we're learning the negative, and the positive lessons from the Spanish.